Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Nina Kauser Show. Um, April, a busy, busy schedule, busy, busy month. We've had an international break. Dusting off the cobwebs off the mic, we are back podcasting. And what a delightful Saturday. The Red go two points clear at the top. Thank you very much. Jobs are good and, and joining me on this podcast, I have two incredible guests. It's great to catch up with them again. And you know what? They're just going to bring nothing but feel good vibes and great analysis to this game. And um, I just love chatting to him. So without further ado, let me introduce my guests first up. It is a familiar voice on the Anfield Index podcast who has the thankless task of keeping those lads in check on the main Anfield Index podcast, Trev and Cambridge. Yes, I'm looking at you. It is the awesome, the incredible the, the the I'd say the most likable female on Anfield Index. It is Lisa Marie. Welcome back, Lisa. Well, thank you, Nina, for that. Much appreciated. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy to be back here on the Nina Kaiser Show to put in my two cents worth today. I know what my favorite thing is. She called me Kaiser. I love that. <laughs> Nina Kaiser. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I love that. Um, and joining Lisa on this podcast and myself, of course, it is it's a guy that doesn't need an introduction, but we're going to give him one. It's the cool, it's the calm, it's the Mr. Pragmatic himself. It's, it's Kaylon Kareem. Look at me trying to soften my voice because, you know, you're very cool and you're very mellow. You're okay, Kay? I was, I was absolutely waiting for most likable male on Anfield Index, but I didn't get that one. <laughs> you are the most likable male well, to me, and you know that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for the intro, Nins. Yeah, uh, no, happy to be here again. Always lovely to talk to you. I mean, guys, we we do have a caller, and um, we, we will get we will we will get to our caller in in a minute. But I just want to kind of um, catch up with you two now. Um, so you know, we've had a bit of an international break. It's been a bit quiet, and things have been looking quite exciting for the Reds. I think we all looked at the fixture list, you know, um, at the FA Cup and all that. It is going to look really busy. And today was the first Premier League game of the month. And, you know, the Reds have to win, um, had to win. And um, we did it. So I want to get your thoughts on how you're feeling in terms of, you know, I remember just pretty much throwing in the towel in, in December. And, and I will hold my hands up to that. There's, um, you know, podcast evidence of me just kind of thinking, oh, gosh, you know, the, the gap is too big. But here we are two points ahead and you know I love to be proven wrong and long may it continue in such matters so Lisa I'm going to come to you I mean how do you feel about it all you know I I didn't completely throw up my hands back back you know I I knew it was it was mm. we were just making it harder for ourselves than we needed to um mm. but I I still held a, a little bit of hope <laughs> but I think we've set our April off right I, you know, I think we've we've made a, a good start to what is going to be a very very exciting month. Hope we keep the momentum going. Absolutely, I mean, there's so much riding on this month as well, you know. And um, Kay, I'm going to come to you. Uh, same question, really. Um, international break. You, you know, had a bit of time out from the Reds. Back in. There's a lot of football to be <laughs> digesting. So, how are you feeling so far? You know, this, this international break was a lot different from normal. Normally, we can kind of just close our eyes and kind of ignore it. And, you know, whatever's going on, we concentrate on one or two games and stuff. Of course, being from South Africa, uh, a soccer, football mad country, our football team has gotten so bad that we just, we, we don't bother with it anymore, most of us. Um, and we were playing France in a friendly and got absolutely 
absolutely belted um, uh, across it. So nothing to really look forward to. But this game between Senegal and Egypt for a World Cup qualifier was actually so nerve wracking. While it was, it was like watching a Liverpool game, <laughs> and uh, it was weird because you're kind of almost sort of backing both sides. Uh, you know, you, you're not, you don't really have much of a dog in either fight. Um, that, so that, that was kind of interesting. It was the first time in a long, long time I was really, really interested in the international break, hoping everybody comes back, uh, you know, uh, fit and firing and in good spirits. And that was one to keep out, uh, keep an eye on just because no matter who won in that game, somebody was coming home sad, you know, just like the AFCON final. And you, 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 you wonder how that will affect things. So that was... That was not as great as normal international breaks. Uh, and it was just a really nice change of pace, I, I can say, to just watch the Reds. You know, it, was, it wasn't just that regular feeling of relief. It was just excitement, you know, and I, I get to watch football again. <laughs> no, 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 I, I hear you. I hear you completely, completely. And you know what, whilst um, before we jump to our first call, I, I like to just kind of dance a little bit on Twitter. And uh, Joe Cousins... Um, Joe Cousy there um, at jcuzzy1 just said 10 league wins in a row. I'm just going to read out random stuff on this pod now. That is going to be the vibe. So, you know, um, really, really great stuff. By the way, you know? <laughs> if I just see some random tweet, it's just going to be read out exactly how I'm feeling. And there are some people who are joining us live on Discord as well. Welcome. If anyone wants to call in, please um, drop us a, a line in the chat and we will get you on. But you know what? We do have a caller, so I'm going to bring him in. It is a familiar voice on this show. Usually kicks things off as well with the callers. And again, doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to give him one. Uh, it is the insightful, the the most consistent caller on the Nina Kaza show. It's um, Kieran. Kieran, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's great to have you back, uh, my friend. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, share with us your thoughts and, uh, you know, even give us your thoughts in terms of how, being away from, you know, football, the international break and coming back into this. It's yours. Yeah, just a, a typical post international break where we come back and it's a half twelve kickoff and it's um where the performances are just a bit rusty and mm. we're not really at the races but but the main thing is that we did get the three points. It was it, it was not a great game. We went. I thought we were particularly um, ordinary on the day, but. Look, I get to say, it's like Watford, you don't necessarily have to be brilliant to win games. And obviously, we're at the point of the season where, we, you know, we obviously have to get the points because it's big, obviously, ahead of the, the big one next week. And, you know, we're top of the league for a couple of hours at least. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, long may continue. And all that we've got to do is kind of apply the, the pressure. But, Kevin, any more thoughts, anything else you'd like to share? Or should we just jump straight and uh, get, get to Kay and uh, Lisa and we can have a chat about what you've just said, said there? So I thought, um, you know, there were... I thought Thiago was uh, outstanding today. I thought he was probably the best player on the pitch for me. Um you know, just thought he was really good. He's just such a joy to watch, um, and it shows you that he's going to be a big player for us over these coming weeks. No, um, uh, we'll, we will get into uh, player focus as as the pod progresses. But yep, I was very very impressed with uh, Tiago, as were the the lads on a BT Sport. Thank you so much, Kieran. If anyone has. No, no, it's an absolute pleasure. If anybody else wants to call in, um, uh, all that, all those that have joined us live on Discord, please just drop us a line. We'll get you on. Right then, so some really, really good discussion points there, Kay, and I'll come to you first. I mean, first things first, um, I don't know. Um, these early kickoffs after international break, I think from my previous years, not recently, but previous years, they kind of traumatised me a little because the Reds do look a little mm. rusty. And sometimes we do fall victim to that where we might grow again and you know i you know you're, you're kind of left with like a bit a bitter taste in your mouth but i mean i guess what i want to kind of get to today is um maybe like you know the fact that we didn't play great but maybe i find that there's an element of professionalism in that in in the sense that although we didn't play great i still felt like we had control of the game um i didn't think they 
frightened us all so much. I thought defensively they looked really decent. But as a whole, I, I feel like, I don't know, Jürgen's kind of managing how you kind of go into each game. Let's not forget we've got Ben Fieker on Tuesday as well and the rotation of players as well. I mean, I guess I'm just having like loads of brain fart moments here and I'm just trying to get out as much as I can possible. Um, but over to you. I mean, what did you make of um, Kevin's points as well? Because I, he's right. We didn't play well. And it's to be expected. I totally agree. Totally agree with both of you there. It was, we didn't, we didn't play well. I think there's a couple of points there. Number one, if I could pick up on your point, Nins, coming back after a break, even an international break, we always do look just a little bit scruffy, right? We look like we've actually looked like we've played too much uh, in the past. We look like we've been a little bit fatigued and struggled to get into the game a little bit. It will be interesting to see because when we have the games um, uh, coming kind of thick and fast, if I can call it that, a game every three days or so. We tend to perform better. We tend to hit our stride. And so this very congested period that's coming up in April, it's going to be exciting for me to see how we develop into that and how we carry uh, a fatigue, how we carry performances from one to the other. I think moving on to the, the other point about our performance not being not being great, I you know I'd love to hear uh, your and Lisa Marie's thoughts on that, just because we it, it's been a few games like that now. And, and your point there, Jurgen Klopp, is maybe that's how he's setting us up. You know, is that how we're setting uh, ourselves up? What are we doing to affect that? Are we relying a little bit more on our defensive side or our midfield? Because is it a, is it really an effect of the attack not really working out? You know, and I think that's that's a that, it's an interesting point. Mo Salah hasn't scored for a while now. Maybe Mane hasn't looked for, looked that great for a while. So the player focus when we get to that is going to be quite interesting for me, even to just listen in on. It's I thought we didn't play well, but the intensity was okay. Uh, I thought our pressing was pretty decent. You know, we had Bobby in the in the team, and his individual performance was fine. He was coming back into midfield. I thought everybody played their roles quite well uh, all around. Uh, again, I don't want to take away too much from the player focus, but generally we were okay in that. We were okay in the paths of play moving forward. We were okay in our defensive play. I didn't think there was any kind of problem with. Agreed. Kind of player application, you know, if uh, if if we can use those silly words that like uh, Timmy Tactics <laughs> regularly chucks in at halftime, uh, you know, the passion and the application and the bottle and all that. Kind of, I I thought we were there. I thought we were present. I thought we didn't take the game complacently or anything like that. It just wasn't working out on the field like we we used to maybe you know uh, a couple months ago. But you know, unlike then when we were dropping. Uh, one or two points here and there. We are just really racking up the points, as Kazi was saying. So it's an interesting thing because w- what will happen is if we drop points, it's easy to look back and then go, well, you know, it's easy to see a trend there of moving towards this. But is this a case, like you were saying, Nens, is this a case of us setting up like that to better manage our squad competing on numerous fronts? Or is this necessity? I suppose that's a question I can chuck back at you guys. What do you guys? think about i think it will be difficult for me to answer the, my own question i don't want to just leave you guys like with the with the burden there. i think for me it would be difficult to organize a team where the forward line is not really performing as as it really should be as i said salah hasn't scored for a while mane whilst well, you know he's, he's certainly not doing badly but he's taking a lot more chances than we're used to diaz has been great but coming into it slowly we don't want to pressure him too much and we sort of feel like we've been relying on Jota a little bit in that respect. And he has gotten the first goal for us so many times now. It's actually in superstar levels what he's been doing. So it might be a mix between the two, but I would just, I'd love to get you guys' thoughts on it. No, it's, 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 a, it's a good point. And Lisa, um, let's, let's chat about this and what, what Kay is asking us as well there, you know, making me answer questions on my own pod. What is this? What is this sorcery? For Lisa, let, let's talk about this. I mean, wh- where do you stand on this? Because I kind of think, and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. I think it's a little bit of a combination of both. I think it's, for me, I, I think Kay's right. I thought nobody played bad. I thought everyone performed to their function and their role pretty well. I just felt like when I was watching that game, the only difference was I felt like the pace wasn't there. And I felt like we were playing a game at a bit of a slower tempo. Now, I don't know if that was to kind of 
maybe Liverpool were kind of no disrespect to Watford, but obviously kind of treating it as okay, this is a little bit of a relegation team. Granted, they travel well, but maybe we have the upper hand on them. We've got the quality. We've also got the riches of the bench, and we just handled that situation in terms of just managing managing the pace, the tempo, maybe not not overexerting ourselves. But if we do get into a sticky situation, we do have the the reinforcements of the bench that can come on, um, which was probably something that Jurgen Klopp didn't have before. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, I agree with so much of what you both said. Um, yeah, I think that is what's making the difference, and picking up on your last point there, that that is what's making, I think, the difference for us this season and how we're moving forward in you know these multiple competitions is we've got the depth our bench to be able to allow us to manage the team overall and manage the minutes that everybody is playing because you know we don't have to run Sala into the ground and have him play every minute of every game because we've got additional attacking up op- attacking options in Diaz and Jata and you know it's it's just so lovely to be able to see that rotation of the front three and, and I think we did I think you know I I mean I think you know, we started at an okay tempo, and I think we just sort of maintained it throughout the match. There were there were certainly levels that we could have, but, but I think you're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is some threat. You know, Watford has had the possibility on the counterattack and with you know with the pace of some of their players, you know, to get something off of us. And and I think we we closed that down well. You know, over. Overall, that's that's probably what Klopp was looking for from the team. Let's just contain them. You know, don't go full tilt if not necessary, because as we have all said, there's a lot of football to play, you know, here in the next month, hopefully two months, um, you know, to get some nice things over the line, fingers crossed. So, yeah, um, you know, I think we did. I think we, you know, our intensity was okay, and I think we did. I think it was just very much a, a matter of just sort of maintaining it, which, which we don't always do. So I, I think the fact that we were able to maintain that level, you know, was was good for us. No, I I, I echo that. And Kay, I'm going to bring you. Let's have let's carry on having this discussion as well. I mean, Kay kind of mentioned there as well, Lisa, about um, you know, Mosala, you know, obviously. Having a bit of, you know, a massive disappointment, actually, um, in, during the international break. You know, obviously, Egypt not making it to the World Cup. And a bit of a deja vu in terms of the AFCON final. And, you know, he has a play that, you know, probably hasn't been his usual self. But, again, speaks it speaks volumes in terms of the strength of, of this team. Because I remember this time last year, I I think it was around about this time last year, was it a bit later where I felt like all our attackers looked a little blunt because Jota was injured. I felt like we were kind of guilty of maybe trying to walk the ball into net. Everything was fundamentally wrong last season in the sense that, you know, the defence was completely out. The midfielders were playing in defence. I think this is actually earlier on in, in more towards like Feb, March time. And, you know, it wasn't looking the best. And there was genuine, genuine worry and concern because the attackers weren't scoring. And, you know, here we are right now, Mosala having, a, excuse me, having that little bit of a, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a dry spell in terms of his goal scoring. But again, you know, you, you've got a player in Jota who is an absolute enigma. I mean, we know he's great, but he's one of those players that can be really, really quiet and then he pops up with a goal and we'll discuss all that in a minute. And I thought he actually had a really decent game today, but you've got a player like that. I thought Bobby Firmino was kind of pressing today and doing little nice things. I mean, could, you know, I wish he wasn't so hesitant in shooting. And then you've got, you know, Marnie on the bench, who's obviously on this wave of confidence with what he's done with Senegal. And then you've got the the whole Diaz new signing as well. And, you know, if Mo Salah isn't his usual best self, I like the fact that I'm in a position where Mo Salah playing the best is absolutely crucial for Liverpool. But you know that there's other players that can also do things. You know, I think, too, you know, and, and because we do have these options, last season we relied so heavily on Salah, you know, to kind of, Mm. pull one out for us and you know and and 
that had to be so fatiguing as for him as well. So, you know, all along, I mean, I've said this multiple times on multiple pods, we've, we've got these options and it's, it's just so lovely that we don't have to solely rely on Mo and Mane, you know, to get the goals for us. You know, we, we've got, you know, and I mean, we've even had them come, you know, Fab's kicked a couple in and, you know, they've come from a couple other places, you know, in the midfield too. So it's, it's good that we've, you know, we, and I think too, I was thinking about this today because it's like, you know, they were just sort of surrounding Mo and maybe jumping ahead a little bit at this point in the season too. It's like they kind of forget how he plays at the beginning of the season and it takes sometimes and then they see, oh wait, he's 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 gonna do again this year what he's what he's done in the years past. And so about this time seems to be when they start really kind of, you know, closing in on him, you know, three players, I'm sure it feels like they're like, okay, you three, just just don't let Mo get a shot away. And so I think but if you've got three people concentrating on him, you know, that opens it up, you know, for others to, you know, to have opportunities. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I do, I feel, I mean, watching Mo and Mane come up against each other in the international play is almost like watching your two kids play against each other or something. You just don't know who to cheer for. Brilliant analogy. I, I like that. I absolutely like that. Okay, um, I'm going to come to Kay in a minute and get his thoughts in terms of what we've just discussed there. But Adam Petruccioni there sharing a tweet from Jess Louise. Considering the team he inherited, that is outstanding. And there is a stat here. Most wins after 250 games in the Premier League. And Jurgen Klopp has 160. Second is Jose Mourinho with 158. Third, Alex Ferguson with 152. And then Arsene Wenger with 146. That is pretty, pretty incredible. Um, okay, got to come to you. Uh, your thoughts, please in terms of what we've just kind of said there in terms of um did we answer your question is there anything you'd like to add um do you agree do you disagree basically no no i, I don't i certainly don't disagree I, I i like that i think i i think there is a confidence about the team i think especially when you have the ability in the midfield now to control games um it it, it i feel the team is a lot more confident having this sort of game when you look at especially what the opposition is doing, I think Liverpool react to that quite a lot. You know, 1-0 is not the most secure scoreline. We all know that. And there's a reason why your your crowd, even if it's your home crowd, might get a little bit nervous if it's at 1-0 for a long time because any stupid thing could happen. And it's not like the referees have been overly kind to Liverpool <laughs> this season um, albeit that uh, what we saw later in the game today was a brilliant little intervention by VAR. I think that's what VAR is for. We can talk about that. But uh, I, I think when you have an opposition that sits so deep and does you know does not a lot going forward, is putting kind of speculative balls through, then you have keeper at the back like Allison. I think at times you do kind of feel that maybe you can rest on that a little bit and it might actually get the opposition out of, out of uh, position uh, a little bit, especially if you have a defense that can turn uh, a ball at the back into attack so quickly. So, yeah, I, I agree it's a bit of both. Um, I, I do hope our attack kind of clicks more into gear a little bit uh, as we go along. Yeah. It, that would be nice. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I don't think there's... I think it's it's what, what you were saying, um, Nins, in terms of that uh, Adam Petruccione's uh, retweet there. I think that's really the story of what's going on here. You know, we're, we're winning, and as Kazi said, it's serial winning at a time when it's going to put tremendous pressure on Man City and the rest of the league. And it's just, it just kind of shows, you know, it just really, really kind of shows what this team is made of uh, to, in terms of quality, in terms of intangibles, and yeah, long may it continue, man. That, that's, I think that's the story, really. No, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I guess we've got to just carry on having a little chit chat about the game. So, you know, it started off at a decent tempo. I think, you know, one thing I loved, Lisa, and I'll come back to you was, um, of course, and this is where I think, you know, where this team is so deadly and so threatening. You know, around about 24, 21 minutes, you know, you see Alison make that save and then Liverpool just go off on one and then, you know, um, Hendo picks up the ball. I think Thiago passes it to Hendo. Hendo whips it to um, Joe Gomez, who is playing right back uh, in, in place of Trent Alexander-Arnold, which makes me smile. And, you know, he crosses it in and Jota just like 
But before then, I thought Jota was pretty quiet. He he was very, very involved after that. But, you know, Jota just kind of beats, uh, gets ahead of the keeper and just, um you know, glances that header in. And it, that's one thing I love. You've got to take your chances against Liverpool. If not, they will punish you straight away. And I love that. I love the fact that Liverpool just kind of responded to that threat straight away. Yes, and it's funny. I had just, I was writing down, nice, nice save from Alison. Um, we need to watch their yeah. counter and look up. <laughs> just as, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Jada was a little, but I think sometimes Jada tends to start off a little quiet. You know, it's almost like he's kind of waiting to see where the, you know, the spaces mm. are going to be for him, you know, where he's going to have those opportunities. And, um, but, you know, he certainly jumps on them and that literally, haha. I wasn't even trying. And, and you know, and, and gets gets that goal when we need it. And and you're you're right. I think he did. He played well, you know, throughout the game. But but you know, he certainly got off to to a you know a good start for us early on. And I was so pleased to see Joe put that cross in for the score. I mean, I just it just that made me happy um, because I think he is you know. We've all talked. I know I've said it. And, you know, we can't expect whoever steps in as right back when Trent's not playing to play exactly like Trent. Nobody in the world plays that position to the level of Trent Alexander Arnold. And, and I think you know, suffered in the past, and and I think even the first time or two of the season when you know when Joe came in has come in a couple times and played it. But I think everyone is starting to realize that you know there's no like for like. You know, I mean, and and I think. Joe is doing a fine job, you know, in this day and in the time before when he's come in and played for Trent at that position. He's going to offer something different. But I think today showed us that he offered something that was very valuable. Yeah, I actually thought he had he had a pretty, pretty decent game. And Kay, I'm going to come to you. I mean, your thoughts on, you know, just how quick Liverpool just kind of responded on the counter and Jota scoring a goal and, and Joe Gomez, you know, stepping in as, as right back. You know, I think a lot of eyes were on him. I, I feel like, you know, I remember, I think it was about two seasons ago, um, you know, he didn't have the best of games in, in certain defence. And like, obviously, there's a, a, a small fraction of our fan base that, you know, gets quite tribal and they kind of took their frustration out on him. But I thought he played really well and he's putting a lot of crosses in today. And, you know, he was, he was finding his, you know, he had a bit of creative energy about him. So, I mean, your thoughts about just that whole um, 21 to 22 minutes, you know, where you, you, you had a heart in mouth kind of moment and then you're celebrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> So it, it, it's, it's kind of, it does happen like that quite a lot. It feels like over the course of Jürgen Klopp's, Liverpool uh, sort of managerial stint, there have been a lot of those, right? Like, it feels like the opposition almost scores or just barely misses, and then Liverpool will just chuck it up the other end and do something mad like that. It's, it, it's lovely, but uh, I think there's a couple of things we have to highlight here. I, I'll start off with Alisson, who just, wow, man. Like, you know, the saves, uh, I forgot who it was, but somebody says it's not natural the way the way I'm not... Um, the, what did he say? The way I'm not nervous at all when there's a one-on-one -on -one anymore because of Allison, <laughs> yeah. And he just does that. He, he, so he pulls off that save and then gets things started again. Absolutely ridiculous save. But the thing is with Gomez is with the injuries and stuff like that, I know you, you, uh, you were talking about the, you know, the match from a, a little while back. His return now in this stint, that one I thought he looked a bit dodgy, looked quite off the pace. Uh, he looked like he was somebody who had spent a lot of time out. And then you kind of, you, know, you hold your hand to your chin and, and you go like, Oof, you know, I, I wonder about that. I hope he, I hope he makes it, you know, I hope he, he can get back to his, his best and I hope he get back to where he's comfortable because then all these stupid rumors are going around or Joe Gomez wants to leave and get regular football and all those kinds of things, which we know there are no basis for, but they still circulate, which is an indication of more what a fan base feels rather than what's happening in the in, in the team. But it was so good to see him today, especially in an offensive sense, just because you know what he's got defensively, but with no Trent there. At times, we've really struggled to get creativity from that right-hand side if Salah doesn't you know, go on some blinder. And the way he crossed, though, I mean, the, it was so purposeful. He, he just had this yeah. air about him. Like, he was absolutely 
going to kick the freak out of this ball and get that shape in it. You know, it was so determined how he did that. And he did it a couple times. It was so great to see. That first cross, that one for Jota, it was, there was so clinical, perfect, mm -hmm. you know, it was so so such a lot of perfection and, and then Jota just had to come across timed so well get the glance over which is not easy it was not mm -hmm. easy but th that moment there that moment when you're faced with Allison and you don't know what to do versus that moment where Jota's running onto the ball he thinks I know exactly what to do with this and where where to hit this um in terms of timing is really the difference between the two teams and it's moments like that, I think, that really get opposition to kind of understand, like, oh, you know, I know it's 1-0, but we're dealing with the team here. You know, this team can turn it on when they want to. Moments like that are terribly important in tight games, especially when teams are doing these low blocks. You need to have somebody putting through their creativity, either through balls or doing things like that. And Gomez really, really stepped up. And we've got somebody in Jota, Fox in the Box, who just pops up and does these things. Uh, match after match after match, and it's a wonderful combination. Lovely, lovely to see. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely can't complain. And, you know, if we're speaking about tweets, I mean, Anfield Index here with the best tweet, and it is from Dan Kennett, um, a familiar voice on Anfield Index and, of course, the Under Pressure podcast. 10 league wins on the spin, 13 clean sheets in the last 18 in all comps. The LFC, the LFC 1819 crushing machine is well and truly back. I mean, wow, <laughs> you know, you, you're reading these stats and these numbers are coming through and you're just absolutely amazed at what, what the Reds are doing here. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal stuff um, at the moment. Um, my score thing's just gone off and Man City are winning, but it's absolutely fine. We've just got to keep winning our games. That is the most important thing. If we not win all our games, we do great. I've got a comment here from M. Sal and he um, just put in there, looking at the fixture list, I feel we have the more trickier game, City with a slightly easier run in. Our game's away next week is a must win for us. Win that and we've got a great chance. Lose that game and I believe City will clinch it. And I think, of course, we're talking about the big one there. And Lisa, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on that one there and that comment? It's almost like the uh, classic. Remember, they used to call it the six pointers. It, it, you know, oh, whatever yes, they used to call it. Yes. That's that's the vibe I'm getting here. Yeah, I mean, I don't. You know, I I don't know. I'm so torn every time I think about the city game. So I've been kind of trying not to think about it, if if that makes any sense. Um, and I'm not going to be able to watch it live. Um, so the the thing for me is going to be, am I going to be checking it or, or just going to try to wait and see what, what the result is and, and, uh, or not see what the result is. And when I can sit down and watch it later, that will probably be completely impossible. It will yeah, be impossible. I mean, I, you know, I, I know, right. I think that I, you know, I certainly think that, you know, we're up for it. A little bit of me want is kind of holding back to see how the game midweek against Benfica goes to sort of before I predict how I think the city match is going to go on on next weekend. But you know, on the day, you know, we've we've got it. I mean, what what we really have to hope for is that Pep just you know gets in his head too much and and does something weird with his team and mm -hmm. it just does not work. Um, I think that's what I'm crossing my fingers and holding out for is that, you know, he just overthinks and, and it just messes with him, um, which is, you know, could, you know, is a very strong possibility. I think our guys can win any game. I mean, that's, that's just the way I, I am. Um, but it's certainly going to be difficult. And if nothing else, I think we can certainly come away with the point, um, which you know, will keep us in it. And, and I think that's it. We've just got to keep pushing them. We've just got to keep pushing them to the very last. And, and I, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, cause you know, city have lost some matches throughout the season that we've certainly, or tied a match that we've certainly would have expected them to win. So you just do not know. It's true. I mean, Cl I mean, Pep does like to get into his head a fair bit, and I think Jurgen does live there rent free. I mean, Kate, what what are your thoughts um, on on M M Sal's uh, post there in Discord? Yeah, it's, I mean, 
<laughs> you know, now that we've gotten it over with, I, th- I totally agree with Lisa Marie. There, we we can beat we can beat anybody, and it's for the first time in a really really long time, uh, years and years and years. It's not a matter of Liverpool can beat somebody on their day. Liverpool can now beat somebody on any of their days. You know, really, <laughs> that's kind of thing. We, we, it's it's just crazy to think. Like, look at these statistics we're putting out. You know, that's 10 in a row. We haven't conceded a goal now for eight hours. I think we conceded one goal. The, the, this is this is a the team that used to rule the 60s, the team that used to rule the 80s, come back and do that again. And Jürgen Klopp has done that. And to put it into perspective, the team we're playing, you know, we're going up against uh, for the league. That's not even a team. That's a country. And I don't say that to highlight the unfairness, you know, but a country has gone and gotten the best coach in the world basically uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's you know if we could say there's is anybody really better than pep uh, you could certainly say there are some who is equal but they've they've done that and then they said you can make as many mistakes as you want you can spend 200 million on the defense and the next year we'll just do it again this is a juggernaut this is a world footballing force that we're dealing with and Jürgen Klopp has across multiple years if not put them, run them so that they needed to post record numbers just to win the league. We've got Pep doing stupid, stupid things like saying he'd rather win the league than win the Champions League because he hasn't got the metal for that. You know, and it's no disrespect to to City or anything like that, but to have another team in the league vaguely go close, we have never seen a team like that. No previous iteration of City, no no. Chelsea team like that. I mean, even that United team doesn't come close to this in terms of the numbers they're posting, the what they can do. It's absolutely incredible. And it, we really need to understand this Liverpool team is ridiculous and sensational at the same time. And that we're going into next week and going like, you know, we just need something. We just need something there. But at the same time, it's not that City have stuffed up or anything like that. This is us. We've gone and done that. Liverpool have gone and done that. You know, we've clawed that gap back. We've used the game in hands. We're competing on multiple fronts and we're still doing this. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. I, I, I almost don't want to think about the coming matches, Nins, because, it, you know, the, the heart just starts going. <laughs> I mean, everything feels like a six-pointer now, right? Every, every game feels like a final. Oh, and then you know you still have Champions Leagues and, and that sort of stuff to uh, to get. I see people on Twitter already starting to talk about lineups and the way they would configure attacks and stuff like that in the coming games. I absolutely do not blame them because we're so invested in this. There's such a lot of enthusiasm, and that's because of the way this team is playing. That's because of the numbers that they're putting up, the wins that they're getting. Crazy, crazy statistics. What a team, Nens. I know what a team, and I was just kind of whilst you guys were talking, and I just went back to that whole what Lisa Marie said about you know Pep Guardiola getting in his head, and and you touched on it as well, Kay. And what I'm really interested about about this head to head is, I think, I don't think we have, I can't think of the last time we maybe have played Man City where it is so 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 tight, and this is going to be really really interesting to see their their metal. And to see how they deal with the pressure. I mean, I know when they drew that game to Crystal Palace and they asked Bernardo Silva a question and he started talking about Liverpool. And, you know, and exactly. I, I just remember him just randomly <laughs> mentioning Liverpool. So I'm really, really interested to see how they, how they deal with that pressure. I mean, I know we, you know, we're, we're used to it. We, we're used to having our backs against the wall. So I'm really intrigued about them. Also, we know that they don't fare well when they concede. It's almost like they, they don't know what to do because they're just so used to always being ahead of the, in the game. So all these things, I'm, I'm really, really, I mean, I shouldn't be intrigued about because literally I'm absolutely, you know, like you, it you is what, nervous stuff. But, you know. You know what else, Nins? You know what else? I wonder if the, if the total, the thing is with the, with the PR that's come out of different clubs, it's really interesting, right? Like we've seen Man United having their players write like little tiny essays about why they're sorry about stuff, which I think is is incredible. I, I, why? Why are you doing that? You know, But the, if you look at City, their whole thing has been to turn the PR around so that it looks like they are the little guy doing this amazing thing. And I wonder if that can play into the wrong hands for them, if they start believing that, if they start looking over their shoulders and stop understanding what they are in terms of this you know, crazy, ridiculous team. With all you know, with all these riches, and suddenly you're looking over your shoulder, going like, 
well, I'm slightly worried about Liverpool now. We did, this is, I shouldn't admit that out loud. But when you start talking about Liverpool without any prompt or, you, you know, it, like, it, it just says something. It just says, like, what if you've bought into that? What if you said it so many times, Pep? That no one cares when you win stuff. That you know, oh, we'll try and cope as best we can. That every team you come across is just the best team you've ever faced, and you had to do so much to beat them. What if your players start believing that? What if they believe it when we play you? Oof! <laughs> just got chills. <laughs> You do get chills. You know what? Let's kind of bring it back to uh, this game. I mean, Lisa, um, let's let's continue with this game. I mean, for me, the first half was pretty much um, after Jota scored. It was just pretty much like, yep, Liverpool have scored. I did, there weren't much going on. I think there was just that little bit of a chance where I think Matic put the ball in and it kind of ping-ponged around their box and Jota was on the end of it, but I think he kind of fired it wide. There wasn't an awful lot going on in the first half. Second half, I mean, Jones comes off for around about 61 minutes. Fab comes on. I mean, it was really, really interesting because we spoke about Liverpool and they weren't the best, but there was a lot of, like, headed chances. And, you know, and I noticed that, you know, there was a lot of, like, clear headed. I think Virgil van Dijk had one. I think Jota had one. He missed one, you know, which was probably easier than the one that he actually took, which was actually absolutely brilliant. But there was a lot of this going on. And um, I, I felt like, Maybe some of the rustiness was um, just not being clinical in the fi- in, in in the final third. I mean, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. You know, and we've already kind of touched on that. We we don't generally play well after an international break because this <laughs> yes. is such a rhythm team. You know, I mean, no break. Of course, they weren't you know playing with each other, so. It's like they almost always need that one game to sort of adjust back to, okay, I'm back at Liverpool. This is how we play here. You know, this is who I'm linking up with. This is how it, this is how it's done. And, you know, I mean, we just, I mean, it's almost come to be expected, which probably isn't a good thing. But although, I mean, I think today we played better than, than we have sometimes after those long breaks. Um, because, you know, it was just sort of a, we just kind of maintained the level. I think. Um, but yeah, there were, there are a lot of, you know, we, there are a lot of good chances. There was, yeah. I mean, I think Robo almost had one in off of a, was it a Gomez cross maybe there was something where I know he almost had one in as well. So I mean, there were, there were, you know, it wasn't for, it wasn't for lack of trying, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. But you know, I mean, you had Firmino just kind of quietly linking up the play and, and getting things mm. done. And, and so, I mean, there was a, there, there isn't a whole lot to be, critical of i don't think but there isn't a whole lot to be celebrating i suppose either would would, would kind of be the flip side of that um but yeah i mean it was just but you have to say you know once you hit that sort of 65 ish or so minute it's like okay let let's get another one here lads let's 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 truly lock this in um and you could kind of feel it a little bit from the crowd too because it was it was just a or maybe Here's possibly what it was. Is commentators business around Anfield? Oh, they're getting a little anxious. And I just wanted to go, oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> just shut yeah. up. Um, you know, I mean, they're trying to set a narrative. You know, you know what they're trying to do. So, I, you know, I stopped kind of listening to that and, and just really kind of watch. You know, I mean, I think we had at one point the stat came up and we've had like 73% percent possession so i mean yeah. even when watford did get the ball we were nicking it right back from them they weren't they weren't generally keeping it very long so it was it was just it but it did get to a point where like okay we're just we're just trying to see this out and i was like yeah that just that's what makes me nervous is when it feels like we're like all right well the one knows what we're doing today and i'm like uh, no don't do that boys Absolutely. And and what about you, Kay? I mean, what did you make of uh, the, the second half? I felt like, you know, lots of headers, lots of crosses into the box. I felt like we were trying to be threatening on set pieces. Your your thoughts in terms of how um the, the lads did in, in, in the second half? Yeah, I thought that there had to be some kind of some kind of little reaction. I think there's just too much work in the midfield that Thiago had to do from that first half. Uh, it's not that... I. 
Mm. You, you know, I, I don't think he was doing you know absolutely all the work by himself. It's it's. I just think we were asking him to do much more than what is optimal for his position. Uh, and there was, it, it's not like they were having the worst game, but I, I just think that there was a, a little bit of kind of. Uh, I don't want to say this badly. <laughs> I don't, but a, a, a sort of slow performance from the other two midfielders, if I can put it that way. So going into the second half, I'm thinking something needs to change in the midfield. We're not controlling the game 100% like we want to. I know that the opposition hasn't had a bunch of chances, but we don't want them to get something. We don't want them to get a freak penalty or anything like that. And then we have to step it up. We have to come inside because so goals change as well. It's also worth noting as well, before that sub as well, I think I'd, I'd, I'd say maybe Watford had their best chance when they broke us. And, um, yeah, I was I just going to say that with the Pedro, yeah. with the Pedro yeah. chance, when he, he kind mm-hmm. of curls it around the far corner. Yep. And I think I think looking at that from the bench, they just went... I mean, it, it looks pretty um, pretty planned, right? I mean, on 60 minutes as well, you know, which is which is now normal time when when Jurgs makes his uh, wakes his subs. It, it did look like at that point in time, Jones was nursing some sort of thing. I, I know that my commentary team, um, which had Beglin on it, was mentioning something like that. Like, yeah. he, he might yeah, have had, picked up a knock, so... Yeah. But I, I just I just wonder from the first half that there was enough in that first half for the coaching staff to go. No, there has to be something else we do in this game because this way, it, it's not open, but it's a little bit too open. And we're creating chances, but we need to create more. And after that substitution, as it goes along, they didn't really have anything in the game after that. I think that's because Fabs just locks everything down. He allows then Thiago and um, Hen Henderson to do the things that they need to do and fill optimally the functions that they need. So, yeah, I mean, I think w- once we get into the second half, once that substitution is made from then on, it's just, you know, we have a, a total grip on the game and it feels a lot better. But yeah, um, it would be interesting to see going forward as well. Uh, not maybe so, so much, not the next game, but, but in future games, what happens when that, when we have uh, performances like this, it's not bad, it's not bad performances. But things can change it, how early Jürgen Klopp moves in to change it, especially given the, the, the sheer number of games that we're up for. No, I'd, I'd have to agree with that. And, I mean, I think Kevin spoke about uh, Thiago's performance and, you know, I he he got man of the match on, on BT Sport. I thought he had a really, really decent game. He's probably the better midfielder. So, you know, before we kind of talk about... Um, I mean, it's also worth noting out, um, noting as well that I love that little bit by Fab before we get to Tiago. So I love that little bit by Fab where um, he won the ball in the middle of the park and he just kind of, uh, you know, put his body in there, took the ball, got on his feet and just released it to Bobby. And um, it was um, it was a great interception by Fab, but, you know, and it passes it to Bobby. Bobby goes on a run and just plays like a really, really poor ball to, to Mane on the counter. But... That's what you love about Fab. You know, the fact that he, he does get stuck in there and he's not afraid to do so and he's he's there to win the ball and um you know he's just he's just a great great he's the spine of that team, let's be honest. But um Kay, I'll stick with you. I mean your thoughts on Tiago. Kevin mentioned him earlier on in the pod our, our our first and only caller. So I mean what did you make of his performance? Because I thought he looked really bright. I felt like he wanted to get stuff done. He, he he was like sort of passing the ball, you know, making himself, you know, available, trying to open up the play, trying to get things moving, get things ticking along nicely. Your thoughts on Thiago? I just think he's just magnificent to watch, if I'm honest. He was just, he was so lovely to watch today. The, the, the amount of times that the no look pass, the body faints and that kind of thing had Watford players reacting late going the wrong way and the way he makes he does that he he makes so much space he makes like half a second for the person he's passing the ball to uh and against the low block that is absolute gold you know i know he did you know once he did a couple things where he like gave the ball away once or twice and stuff like that but he's he the, the thing is he comes with so much enthusiasm but on top of that so much quality and I think the the players have reacted to it. I remember when he when he first started that it was uh, uh it, especially like Robertson because Thiago was on his side. Robertson didn't know what to do. <laughs> he was sort of like, "Oh, Mister Thiago, <laughs> where do you want me to run to? Do you want me to run here?" 
I'll give you the ball back. Do you want me to, you want me to go here? <laughs> it's kind of wonderful um, to see. And I think the rest of the team using his reputation was just like, you know, how do we integrate him? We're so, uh, we're so wanting to see what he can do with us. And now that that's happened, it's taken a little bit of time, especially given that he was a little bit more involved in, de- in defensive actions, um, especially over the first month or two when he came relative to what I'd like. But now I think everybody can see he's so absolutely critical to control in that midfield. He does work defensively. He is an absolute behemoth moving forward uh, in terms of control, in terms of through balls, in terms of making the right pass in the right situation. We haven't had a player like that for so long, somebody so considered. And the full bearing of that was brought here at Watford because I don't think, I don't think they would look back at the game and say that they played badly. I think that Hudson will also look back at the game and say, well, I told the lads to do this and they did that. You know, it's just that Thiago goes everywhere, picks up the ball, makes a pass, makes half a yard for somebody, and then they can use that for somebody else, you know, and it creates this domino effect, especially when you're playing a deep block. It was such a, I think many people would choose him to be man of the match. There are a couple of other candidates in, in, in my view. Wonderful, wonderful game. What a player. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, do you want to double in on that, Lisa Marie? I, I know you're a huge fan of Tiago. As a more. Who isn't, it? Who <laughs> isn't a fan of Tiago? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had even. In Minot, that there were just some nice little triangles going on between Robo and Tiago and Jata as, you know, as they were moving the ball kind of down that that left side just throughout the match. I mean, I can't even necessarily pick out one, one specific instance, but, but you just saw it, you know, you just saw it happening and, and it's just nice when you can, you know, I mean, we've, we've mentioned or on other, or, you know, other games, other matches that, you know, that kind of thing was happening with, you know, Trent and Mo and either Hindo or even when Elliot has played. So it's, it's nice to see it kind of mirrored over on, on the left side that, you know, they can do that, you know, interlapping play and, and you know, kind of move the move the ball downfield. But, yeah, Tiago, he just, I mean, he brings just that control and even kind of an element of, of calm, you know, to the midfield, you know, as part of that control, that it's that it's just like, okay, the grown-up's here to tell you all how to play this. <laughs> you know, to, yeah. To, to, he does. He just has that level of, you know, as a level of experience and calm and, and just, I mean, I can't think of any other word, but control to, to keep that. And, and that's so key for us um, and is going to remain key for us. So let's just, you know, hope that he can keep health and he can keep playing these matches. You know, I think that will be a key for us at the Man, you know, for the Man City match. Um, you know, both in the in the league and then you know the semifinal for the for the cup is that if if Tiago is able to be in that midfield and and help us maintain that that control and and everything, I I think that could be what we need to be able to get wins against them. I think you've absolutely hit the nail on the head. I think we need that player against Man City, and you know you you talk about his control and. I think that's the I think that's the discipline that that midfield needs, and that's where Jurgen Klopp has that luxury of um, you know the the rotation of players and mixing things up and knowing that he's got this able, more than competent world class midfielder that can run things just behind the strikers. And I think that you know it, it just changes up our, our 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 football, our style of football. And you know, knowing this guy that is quick, precise, and knows exactly what he's doing, it's just so disciplined. I couldn't agree more. He has to. Let's keep him fit, and he has to. And I think it goes without saying. And I speak on behalf of every Liverpool supporter. That guy has to start against Man City. It is crucial. It is paramount that he does. Um, he's wonderful. Um, uh, so yeah, Kieran, we. We too absolutely loved his performance. Right, Kay, you kind of alluded to this. So I'm going to come to you first on this one. VAR finally came through for Liverpool. I mean, it, it was so funny because, like, you know, Stuart Atwell, um, you know, yeah. officials in, in, in the Premier League, you know, I'm not going to say much. I think we all know where I'm going with this one. But what on earth was the defender, you know, Kuko doing, um, holding on to Jota there? It was like a rugby tackle. I mean, I didn't watch rugby and I'm, I know it's a big, huge sport in South Africa, but 
literally wasn't even paying attention, wasn't watching the ball, just held down the player, brought him down. And obviously, I've not caught up with the post-match comments because we run straight on here to do our show because we are dedicated and we're professional. But I, I've just seen a tweet from, I think it was um, Andrew Beasley, and he goes, I find Roy Hodgson's comments really bizarre. Apparently, he didn't think it was a penalty because the local players, they appeal for it. I mean, that is just strange in itself as a concept. What? Clear, clear penalty. So, you know what? Um, it's not cricket. Okay, um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I do have Roy down as a bit of a cricket fan, though, you know. I can imagine him enjoying a good old test match game. But over to you, Kay. <laughs> I thought there were a couple of things with Ainins. Like, first, I just, what was the defender doing? I didn't even think Jota did that much in terms of clever movement. And Jota does have really clever movement. But I thought he just ran off him. And yeah. uh, the, the ball didn't even go there. Why Why were you taking... It would be a wonderful tackle in rugby. That was a very legal, very good tackle in rugby. If Jota had the ball, which would didn't even apply to this this case, he just it just felt like he got confused as to where he was. Maybe he lost his footing or something like that to give him whatever benefit of the doubt there is. And then just decided to take him out. But the thing I was actually more confused about was that VAR saw it and then decided to review it. I was like, this can't be happening to us. Is this, is this how it feels in the rest of Europe when people watch football? <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, what? They were confused. They forgot which red shirts were playing. They thought it was Man United. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a terrific no, okay. point. <laughs> oh, and, and, and the, even, while, even while they were reviewing it and we had the replays, even while that was happening, I thought, oh, yeah. Everybody agrees it's a penalty. Everybody we'll agrees this is a penalty. <laughs> and it, it, somehow, what they will do is, this is what's going to happen. I can see it. They're going to be cutting to Stuart Atwell. He's talking to people about things, what's happening. Oh, just wait. Um, they're reviewing it. He's got his hand on his watch. Like, he knows what he's doing. And then I, I thought he was going to say, we found nothing. Carry on. And then the commentary team would step in and say, well, you know, what I can tell you there is the, the players didn't really make a fuss about it. Maybe it's actually their fault that they didn't get the, you know, it's something ridiculous like that to pick up on what Roy Hodgson was doing. I was so shocked when he's like walking over to the monitor and going, like, yeah, I'll have a look. And then you have to give it once that because more or less, I still thought he would cock it up. You know, it's just, I couldn't believe what was happening. I couldn't believe that VAR was not just working but working in exactly the way that it should. It was so good to see. Such a good example of why that technology is there in the first place. Don't be dumb. Don't be, don't be silly. I, I honestly, I'm so shocked at what Roy Hodgson said. I didn't think anybody could argue with that, but, but here we are. But yeah, on those two measures, I mean, firstly, there was a stupid tackle, but secondly, you know, credit where it's due. That is a wonderful use of VAR. Well done. I couldn't agree more. And uh, Adam Patriccioni there says, rumour has it, what if the defenders have been watching Skirtle's highlights in training? Uh, you know, oh, yeah. That... <laughs> got do you remember who were just saying, like, he's going to give away a penalty. He didn't do it in this match. He's got to stop that now because they're going to catch him. It was like every game we were saying that about Martin Skirtle. <laughs> yeah. And Adam just re responded there saying classic Skirtle. I mean, Lisa Marie, I mean, we've been talking about cricket there and rugby and I'm sure some of those analogies kind of went a little over your head because um, I don't think they're, they're big sports in America. I mean, was that like an NFL kind of tackle? I don't know. I mean, like, it was, well, it was so bad. I, I, have so a, I have a working knowledge of rugby. Um, I have absolutely yeah. no knowledge of cricket. I'm not going to lie to you, um, other than they use a bat and hit a ball. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a little more subtle than an NFL tackle usually is. Um, but, mm. but yeah, it was, you know, it, it, uh, as Kay was saying, players don't make a fuss. Our players don't make a fuss because they know it doesn't generally do them any good, I think. I think it, they've kind of given up making a fuss about stuff like that <laughs> because generally they're just like, yeah, they're ignored. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on. But yeah, when the play went on and, and everything else, and then they kind of stopped it because they're reviewing. I'm like, what are they reviewing? And then they, you know, they they put the replay up on the screen. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, because I mean, Jada wasn't even 
he wasn't even looking. The only thing I can think to give the defender the benefit of the doubt is he's probably at this point in the game kind of copped on to the fact that, you know, Jada is very clever in his movements and, you know, you just never know where he's going to pop up. So maybe he was just like, oh, I'll just kind of, you know, keep him from, you know, from making that initial movement. But, you know, he took it a step too far. So, yes, absolutely. This is the way VAR is supposed to work. So, you know, one time in a hundred, they can get it right for us. So that's it. We're probably doomed for the rest of the season. But I guess we'll take this one. That was just Cormoran saying he was playing Kabaddi in a football game. Does he don't know what Kabaddi is? It's I recently found out what this is. It is the most amazing sport. Oh my word. It's if you, you, thing, you, guys. Know it's so, you have to. If Sorry, anybody who's listening to this if you don't know what this is, you have to go research it. You have to. Look up the rules, please. It's amazing. And it is such an apt description of what went on. And it's basically girl men playing in diapers. It's, it's brilliant. So, yes, get on it. Google YouTube Kabaddi and check the rules out. And Lisa Marie. I do not know it. what that is, but I will look it up. <laughs> yes, and we want your feedback in our WhatsApp group. Lisa Marie, I'm going to stick with you. So, of course, our usual penalty taker, Mosala, is off at this point. And, of course, Man is on for him. Up steps, you know, that guy, Fab, and my word, what a penalty, you know, thunder rocket, top left, power, accuracy, and just so much calm and composure. Fab is, you know, I mean, I guess he's maybe starting to step into that James Milner role um, for the penalties Mm. a little bit, you know, that same kind of calm and clinical, you know, just you don't worry when he steps up to take a penalty or, you know, I mean, I remember when he, when he was first taking one back, I guess it was January, you know, when, when AFCON was going on and, and Sala wasn't there and Milner didn't happen to be on the pitch that day or at that time. And I was kind of like, Oh, Fav. Okay, sure. Or why not? And then of course he just, you know, nailed it and, and has done brilliantly in any one that he's taken ever since. So yeah, I think, you know, if, if Sala or Milner isn't on the pitch and maybe even when Millie is on the pitch, you know, but he's got that same just sort of calm nature about him, um, you know, just clinical, calm, just take care of business sort of air about him that, that yeah, he um, and the commentator, they were saying something about, I mean, I think Mane was maybe a little bit put out that that he was taking it. I didn't really see that, but they were they were saying that on the commentary that Henderson was was leading Mane away. And that may have just been them trying to, you know, create some sort of dialogue or controversy or, yeah. or whatever but you yeah, know well, absolutely way to go fab way to go fab and Kate I mean it's just great again you know when when the likes of you know your your old school penalty taker James Milner on and of course the penalty taker Mosala is not there and we all you know absolutely adore Mosala's penalty taking and how diverse they all are but you know just having somebody like Fab to take him as well I mean y- your thoughts on on his technique and the, the penalty because I don't know that penalty kind of obviously I don't have the pleasure of knowing Fab I do see him playing football but it, it just kind of epitomized him as a player it kind of reminded me of like the the Sunes penalty in the 81 uh, um, European Cup final <laughs> That's very wow. That's that's absolutely spot on. Wow, uh, <laughs> it's not savable. That yeah. that penalty is not savable. He used to do a lot of the uh, the dead ball stuff for Monaco as well when he got there. He's, he's really accomplished in that respect. The thing is, when he steps up to take the penalty, I'm sure you guys saw it, but he he's standing there, looking at the ball with this air of like desperate concentration and mumbling something to himself. You know, it's almost like he's speaking to the ball. And it didn't fill me with that much confidence. So when I saw him smash it into the top corner, like it was nothing, you know, it was, it kind of surprised me a little bit, but yeah, absolutely did not miss a beat. So yeah, I think those piano lessons are certainly paying off at this point. So Rebecca's good. Rebecca, send us more videos, Rebecca. I've been practicing. It's working. <laughs> but it's, it's so good to have somebody else do that as well, right? Uh, somebody on who could um, you know, step up to take a free kick, step up to take a penalty. We saw in that, uh, I was going to say Carling Cup final, Carabao Cup final, we needed everybody <laughs> to take penalties. And, and, and that's a, just a really good sign. You know, everybody can come in, everybody can take part. 
we're not at a loss when a particular person is perhaps not on the field. Oh. So preferences, that's a really healthy position. Absolutely. It really is. It really is. And, you know, I love the fact that he scored. And I think we just love it when Fab scores because we just like Rebecca's reaction on, on the Twitter. She's, she's did, you, did you guys, especially, did you see the one where he was doing the Alicia Keys song when he was learning piano? And he starts he start singing and it's just, it's like a cat dying. Oh, bless him. We can't be talented in all things. You know, if he was a great singer as well, I think I'd be a bit jealous, I ain't gonna lie. He's, he's playing piano and it sounds nice, right? It sounds really, it's yeah. on the keyboard, sorry, not the piano. And he starts singing, he's like, this girl is on fire. And you just hear this little, this little like giggle out the side of her mouth because you're like a huge person in the world, and you're like, same Rebecca, same. So keep on sending us stuff. <laughs> Absolute gold stuff, right, guys? We have come to the end of the pod. I mean, is there anything you kind of want to mention from the game? Any any takeaways? Because I call this the closure pod. You know, we speak about the game, we move on, we look to the next. So, Lisa, I'll come to you. Is there anything that needs mentioning that you feel like needs mentioning? Or should we move on to Man of the Match? Yeah, I was just looking back over my um, my notes. And, yeah, I, I think we've pretty pretty well covered anything that I kind of made, made a note of throughout, throughout the match. Um, you know, just one down and... Use how many to go for the, for the month, yeah. but um, but yeah, but I mean, but that's the way we need to approach them. I mean, I really truly think that it's just you know just tick them off one by one, and you know just concentrate on the match that's right there in front of you know in front and and get it taken care of, and then move on to the next one. And and so I you know I think we've we've set ourselves up you know right to to move through the rest of this incredibly insanely busy month of April. Indeed, indeed. And what about you, um, Kate? Any, any, any takeaways from the game or do you want to just jump straight into your man of the match? No, just a very, very quick one from the game. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought in terms of the forward line hookup, you know, there were a couple of times where I thought players hog balls, didn't make the correct passes yes. when they should have and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised just in terms of, as Lisa Marie is saying, the, the congestion that comes with this month and the fixtures and things like that. Of course, we might see some rotation. But it might also be a case of taking a player off the starting lineup just to to let them refocus, resettle, and and get heads back into the sort of correct perspective. Not that heads are flying off and doing all that kind. Of, it's just to refocus them. So it would be interesting to see how we handle, especially that moving forward. Absolutely. And Kay, I'm as a stick with you. Who's your man of the match? I, so I mean, I think there's an obvious one, but I think there were a couple of contenders. Like I said, I thought Allison mm-hmm. had a had a great mm-hmm. game, and at we, the thing is, poor Allison, because he never gets mentioned in in these things because he makes an absolutely critical save and then he's not heard from for the rest of the game. You can't give a, a you know a man of the match to somebody who's made one save because we forget how critical those things are. Because if it goes in, then suddenly everybody's very nervous. Um, so I thought it was just nice to kind of mention him. But also, Joe Gomez loved his performance. Robo, um, I, I, I loved it as well. Obviously, there's Jota. Uh, it's difficult for me to look past Thiago just because of the way he ran that game. As I say again, it gets low blocks. You need that kind of thing. He's stepping up and he's so enthusiastic. He loves playing for Liverpool. He loves doing that. This is a player who's kind of made that decision for the love of the game, if I can put it that way. He's he's having a ball and it's lovely to see. And just for that, I give him man of the match. But he had a ridiculously good game. He did, he did. Uh, so Tiago is a case shout. And what about you, Lisa Marie? I mean, I like the fact that, you know, there was a shout for Alison there because that crucial save is, like, defining, but we forget it. We, you know, things get lost. So over to you. And, you know, I, I agree with Kay. I mean, I think sometimes we almost take Alison for granted. And, and I don't mean mm. that in a in a disrespectful way, but just because he is so consistent and, and he, he just takes care of, of business that that it does sometimes get lost in in the shuffle a little bit of you know of of all the other things and players and and everything else so you know i mean yeah i i almost just want to give it to joe gomez just because he stepped in and did you know was playing in what isn't his traditional p- position he yeah did get the assist for jada's goal and and everything but you know but yeah I mean, you know I, you know what i am i'm going to be the different one and i'm going to give it to joe gomez just 
just because I feel he needs a little love. Um, um, yeah, I go, absolutely. It's, it's, it's neck and neck for me, but, but I like to be a friend sometimes. So I'm going to give it to Joe. I love that. That is such a great shout. And, uh, you know, again, worth noting, like you just said, you know, not playing in his natural position. And you know what? I was all on the Tiago bandwagon myself, Lisa. And, you know, you've just made a really, really compelling case. So I'm really, really intrigued to see what the listeners and where they go and, you know, who, who was their man of the match and why. And um, it'll be very, very interesting. So um, Lisa's gone with Lisa's gone with Joe Gomez. Kay's gone with Thiago. I initially was going to go with Thiago because I felt that like he controlled the midfield, but I, she's kind of pulled, she's swayed me. I'm, I'm going to have to give it to Joe, to Joe Gomez for those reasons. And you know what? Another thing as well, t- again, Thiago is one of those players, he's a bit like Virgil van Dijk, a bit like Fabinho you, and Alisson. You just always know that they perform better than what they usually should in the, in the sense that they are consistently good. Very seldom that they have a bad game. Um, Joe Gomez hasn't been playing an awful lot of football and has been put into a position where he's not the most comfortable and somebody has really, really established themselves. And I thought he had a game where he didn't really look out of place. And I think for those reasons, I am going to give it to Joe Gomez and got an assist as well. So yes, Joe Gomez is my man of the match for those reasons. Guys, let us know your thoughts. Who's your man of the match and your reasons behind it? We have come to the end of this pod. I have so enjoyed it, guys. I hope you have too. Thank you to everyone that kind of joined us online. Thank you for all your um, your your messages in Discord. And a massive thank you to Kevin as well who called in. And a huge thank you to these two awesome, awesome, awesome panellists. Before I let them go, I shall get some plugs from them. Lisa, um... Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, where can people find you on social media? And is there anything you'd like to plug, you know, specifically another pod that you're on, you know? <laughs> so you can find me on Twitter at LMarieMH. And um, latest episode of the main AI pod um, came out, I believe, this morning. So um, with my friends, Trev and Cam, that I just do my very best to keep under control. I mean, it's it's a difficult job, but I think I'm up to the task. And um, yeah, in our the anyway, we, we had a lot of laughs on the uh, on our most recent episode. So certainly check it out. And yeah, just enjoyed being on with both of you today. Um, and yeah, up the uh, crossers for trophy reds. Absolutely, give Lisa a follow and do listen to the main AI pod. It is brilliant, and I am going to listen to that one today. It's on my list. And Kay, where can people find you on social media? Is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, we love having you on these pods as well, by the way. Um, as as Lisa as well, it's 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 great to work with you two excellent people. Kay, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you yeah, you, everybody can find me on Twitter. Oh, Bobby, I forgot to mention Bobby. He had a really good game too. Yep. Sorry, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, yeah, I'm on the Discord. Uh, I'm on the AI Discord. But if you want to follow me on Twitter or interact that way, I'm at uh, the Kiln. So that's the underscore K Y L N. Uh, yeah, you can find me there. I've actually got not much to plug. I haven't. I've got a a backlog of AI pods because I've been sick this week. Um, so nothing to plug, unfortunately, Nin. Well, you know what? You get well soon, and you know. Hopefully, um, the the Anfield Index uh, uh, channel keeps you good company, right, guys? Give both of these a follow. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I will be back uh, post Man City. Of course, I'll be doing something for the Benfica game as well with my excellent co-host Themis, and uh, who knows what else will be going down there. But, guys, thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed, you know this podcast i enjoyed that win and hopefully you have an awesome weekend thank you so much for listening guys take care till next time up the reds we hope you enjoyed listening to this anfield index show please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically there's nothing quite like fan engagement and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show the best way to get in touch is over on our free discord community where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. 
you won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.